Hi, Bill from Polygon here. In this video, you'll learn how to use the hollow clay block generator to create the perfect custom brick for your scenes. I'll give a brief overview of the different settings and show you how to get the final material into your 3D software. All the settings I'm going to show you will be the same regardless of where you're using it. You can open it in a Substance plugin if you're using 3ds Max, Maya or Cinema 4D. Or if you're using software that doesn't have a plugin like Blender, you can just use the generator in Substance Player, which is where I'm going to be demonstrating it. It's also worth noting that Substance Player is a free download. I'll be sure to include a link to it and the relevant add-ons in the description below. I'll also include a link to the generator itself, which is available for download on polygon.com. Okay, so the first category of settings we have here are some general settings, most importantly, the resolution of the final textures. Now, by default, this is set to 512, and this is so the viewport updates nice and fast while you're making alterations. We'll increase this number to around 4K when it's time to export, but for now I'm going to set it to 1024 as that still runs pretty nicely on my particular hardware setup. There's also a random seed value here which will basically create a completely different version of the current material based on the settings below. Next we have some global parameters. From here we can choose our workflow, either metallic roughness or specular glossy. Now this is an important one to get right and it will depend on what application you're using. In Blender, for example, it's best to go with the Metallic Roughness workflow, as that's what the principal shader works best with. However, let's say you're using uh, Corona Renderer, you'd be better off using the Specular Glossy workflow. Chances are you already know what one works best for your software, uh, but if you don't, please feel free to contact us and we can advise on the subject. Now the rest of the controls in here relate to the general sizing and shape of the bricks. We have sliders for uh, horizontal and vertical brick amounts, a control for the width of the mortar, and some controls for changing the uh, rotation and extrusion of the individual bricks. The next category is where we can start to alter the overall look of the bricks. Uh, first up we have surface, which allows you to change between a few different sort of surface patterns for the brick, uh, as well as some fine controls over the edge damage and crack effects. Next we can change the colour of the bricks to pretty much anything we like, uh, though I'd recommend to make sure you uh, pick, a, pick realistic colours based off reference images if you're aiming for photorealism. Finally, in the microsurface category, we can adjust the roughness, how shiny the bricks will look, You'll likely want to keep this setting relatively high, and it's worth noting that if you're trying to create a wet, rained-on sort of look, um, that we have separate controls for that, which I'll cover shortly. Okay, after that we have some similar controls for mortar. We can adjust both the colour and roughness levels for that. Now finish allows us to add a painted effect to these bricks. Uh, once enabled, these other sliders appear, and we can control the, the colour of the paint, the uh, shininess of the paint itself, which doesn't affect the roughness setting of the bricks um, underneath, which is important because the next sliders or the next section allows us to control coverage. From here we can choose between, uh, let's say, a completely painted wall uh, to one where half the paint has been scratched or, or worn off. Um, you can create some really cool variations here. The age category basically allows us to add in various types of dirt. We can control uh, the general dirt amount as well as add in top and bottom grunge uh, to save having to manually add that in later. From here we can also add in an overall wetness effect uh, without having to manually adjust roughness settings elsewhere uh, in the material. So yeah, that's, that's a summary of all the controls within the hollow clay block generator. With all these settings there is really a, a huge amount you can do to generate all sorts of different textures. Now I'm going to quickly cover exporting so you can take your finished material and generate a PBR texture set to use in other applications. If you're using a Substance plugin directly uh, within 3ds Max or Maya, rather than Substance Player, you can ignore this part. Now here in the shading settings we can adjust the normal format. Uh, depending on your render engine and software you may want to adjust these. Uh, I for example use Blender for most of my projects uh, and for that you'd want OpenGL. So I'm going to set that now. We also have some controls for making overall adjustments to ambient occlusion strength and normal map intensity. Before we open up the export window, we need to head right back up to the top of the settings panel and set the resolution to what we want for our final exported textures. Um, I'm going to select 4K uh, and then we'll head over and click on the export as bitmap button. As you can see, this opens up a new window and from here we can set up our export. 
Uh, by default, all these various texture types are available, but I'm going to disable a few uh, and just export the base color, roughness, normal, and height textures, um, as, as they tend to work great in Blender as is. Next, let's head up to the file type. I tend to go with .tiff files here for the extra color depth, uh, and then the only thing left to do is set the export folder. Once everything is set up, simply hit export and your textures will be saved. And that's it. From there you can simply load them into your target application and you're good to go.